Successful people are not people without problems. They have, as a rule, just as many problems and largely the same kind as everyone else. The difference is that they learn to solve their problems. Successful living is nothing more than the ability to solve successfully the problems which are as much a part of living as breathing. The degree of our success will be determined by the extent to which we can solve our problems. If you can tell me what you want, I can tell you how to get it. The problem with the great majority of individuals is not with their ability to achieve their goals in life, but rather with the failure to understand two factors vital to successful living. The first is to make the decision as to what it is we want enough to give it most of our attention until it's been achieved and to clearly define it. And the second is to fully understand that we have the ability to achieve this goal or we wouldn't want it in the first place. The next vital rule to successful living is to understand that our success is won or lost by our ability to serve others. We are interdependent and it's just as impossible to succeed without serving others as it would be to live in our modern world without others serving us. Our rewards in life will and must always be in exact proportion to our service. It is the misunderstanding of this single law, which in my mind is responsible for fully 90% of the frustration and discontent we see around us. Now, a lot of people don't like this law, if they're even aware of it, but not liking a law does nothing to change it. The basic laws of nature and economics are unchanging. If we're out of step with them, we are, as Thomas Huxley put it, checkmated, without haste, but without remorse. But to those who know and work with the laws, he said, they are paid with the overflowing sort of generosity with which the strong delight in strength. If a person doesn't like his income, all he has to do is take a good long look at his service. Look where you will, you will find this law in undeviating operation. Our rewards will always be in exact proportion to our service. This is the law then that lies as the supporting structure of economics and personal well-being, so fix it in your mind. All attempts to sidestep or in any way avoid this law will result in frustration and failure. So this brings up the question, if what I want is more than I now have, how can I increase my service in order to earn it? Well, whom do we serve? We serve people. So let's take a moment to try to understand people. The more we understand them, the better we can serve them. I think of an adult human being as a grown child doing his best to play for the first and last time on earth this game called life. The extent to which he learns the rules of this mighty game will determine his success. But right here we run into an historic and exasperating fact. People down through the centuries have, with the most amazing consistency, divided themselves into two groups. One group contains about 5% of any given population. The other group contains the remaining 95%. Neither of these two groups is any better than the other. But one thing separates them. The big group, the one containing about 95% of the people, never seems to get the word, while the smaller group, the 5%, does. Now, what do I mean by getting the word? I mean about 95% of the people never quite understand emotionally or intellectually that we as individuals control to an altogether unsuspected extent our lives here on earth. That each one of us is the architect of the structure fashioned by our years. You see, all of us want the same things, but only about 5% figures out how to get them. Within each of us burn two unquenchable ambitions, to serve importantly and to gain financial independence. Both of these worthwhile goals are within the reach of all of us, man or woman, but according to statistics, only about 5% achieve both of them. Why? Let's look at it logically. Every human being has a tendency to think, act, and talk like those by whom he is surrounded. This is environment, and it exercises an enormous influence on our lives. We've already pointed out that 95% don't seem to get the word in life, then it follows that in the case of any given individual, the odds are 95 to 5 that he is surrounded by the larger group. 
And since a body in motion tends to remain in motion until acted upon by an outside force, that he will continue to conform to his group unless we can do a better job of serving him through knowledge. The failure of most people to live successfully is not caused by their lack of abilities, far from it, but rather in their failure to decide what it is they want and understanding that our wants are governed by our talents and abilities and that we are divided into two groups of roughly 5% and 95% and that it's the 5% group which is successful. So here, let me give you a definition of success which to my mind covers the subject completely. Success is the progressive realization of a worthy ideal. That is, anyone who knows where he is going in life is a success. At the moment he makes the decision of what it is he intends to accomplish, of what it is he considers a worthy ideal, he is successful. Once this goal has been accomplished, he is again, by our definition, a failure until he establishes a new goal toward which to work. To my mind, this is what we as human beings were intended to do.